you are probably already doing some maker learning in your classroom. What are ways that you are incorporating some maker ideas? We, we could share these on a Padlet, maybe a Wakelet, uh, Jamboard, different ways we could share some things. Be a nice idea to take a couple minutes to do that with your fellow staff members, see what other people are doing, always a good thing. Here are some examples from one group that I did. Uh, somebody made butter. So here's the thing, think about the conversations you could have. Because again, it's all about the conversations. You know, we're talking math things, we're talking science things, what history could be, could be involved in this, or English. Uh, making slime that could be part of uh, reading a story uh, I'm just thinking it's kind of like horror stories um, kind of kind of thing you, you've got the science and the math of slime um, you know we got making butter uh, that colonial days making butter so you got some history in there uh, could it be part of a, a literature story roller coasters we got obviously physics and math in there uh, making roller coasters. Yeah, I mean, you got the, lots of design elements. Um, holiday cards. So we're talking service ideas, maybe. Tamales. Food is always awesome to do. Food, you, you can always talk about science and math. And you don't have to be perfect and talk every science detail and every math detail. That's the thing. It's about having conversations where, you just, where, where you're integrating lots of things. Not just keeping it as just a science thing. Because things don't exist like that in the world. Um, so, you know, tamales, this could be culture, this could be history. Uh, we're talking about a time in history, a country, a region kind of thing. Um, Play Doh. Again, great, great things, you know, great. Origami people love to do rockets. I love launching rockets. Rockets, you're at history, you're reading, reading books, uh, you, know, you could be reading Rocket Boys. Um, from was it from here to the moon uh is that the uh Vern book um different things water filters snowflakes oh there's an awesome thing to do with snowflakes um because you know where does snow you know what 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 uh history of historical events happen being you know, occurred with snow as the background there's lots of science and math about snowflakes snowflakes only form hexagons six sided They're, they have a symmetry of six remember that do not let your kids make five-sided snowflakes or eight-sided snowflakes snowflakes are sixes um so you know what things could you use to make these with they could be paper they could be cardboard uh whatever tools and materials you have that's what you do um bracelets i see think of jewelry i think of i think of history and cultures where certain jewelry a certain style certain patterns certain materials uh are due to a culture or a time um I, I, that's what i think of so there's lots of examples and these were just some of them you know so here i'll, I'll tell you about some uh, some examples uh, that i've seen in, cl in class um if you want to learn about measurement or scale or proportion you got to make stuff even if you make your own measuring devices uh, the top example is designing a measuring device. It was a 10 centimeter ruler, and they were just we were just putting tick marks every centimeter. And then you start deciding how many tick marks do you need. You know, nothing nothing teaches you better about what the tick marks mean than if you actually have to put them on the measuring device. Um, so you make you make rulers. Um, you can design shapes in 3D. You know, what's the mean for something to be 50 percent bigger? Or 50% smaller. You know, you can do them digitally. Do them physically. Just, I mean, just cut things out of paper. Cut out a square. Cut out a square that's 50% bigger. Um, and the, the, the idea was making some of this stuff is you get, the kids get to personalize it. They put their own imprint on it. It's theirs. It's them kind of thing. Um, that's an important part of maker-centered learning. Personalization. Individualization. In geometry class, uh, you know, if you're studying shapes and have some geometry concepts, you got to make them. You got to make the shapes. Uh, various sizes, various materials, discuss the properties, uh, discuss the materials. 
one year in geometry class, you know, we partnered up and we built geodesic domes out of straws and pipe cleaners. The, the pentagon and the triangle are the only two shapes you need to make um, geodesic domes. So now you can talk about um, making domes for Mars, for the moon, for whatever, wherever we're going to land. So we're talking space. We're talking, uh, we're going to be talking some literature, some books about space and living on those planets. Um, we then also divided the class in half and uh, we built them out of PVC. They're seven foot tall. And so the kids, the, the kids divided up, decided um, which roles they wanted to play. They were the constructors. But we added something with this is that they had to market their dome as something. Um, as a greenhouse, as a storage shed, as a playground thing, and they had to make flyer. Uh, they had to design a flyer. They had to make a commercial. Um, so they they choose which role they want to do. But the great thing was they did crossover with the roles. The kid who was designing you know flyers, he they went and did some construction. The kids who were doing some construction decided to go, you know, work with the movie people a little bit, and they just did that on their own. You know, if you want to talk about Newton's laws of motion, you gotta build. You gotta build things that move, make stuff that moves. Uh, we've done hovercrafts, we've done um, mousetrap cars. You know, ask a lot of questions. That's that's where all the things happen. Listen to the questions they come up with. You know, on the, on the hovercraft, why did we run into the wall? Always came up something about friction. You know, um, how can we go faster? How can we go? How can we make the, the mousetrap car go further? Can we do this? Well, maybe. Let's talk about that. Make make sure it's safe. You know, and then how would you do it? I mean, all the, those conversations. If you need to explore buoyancy, you got to make things that float. Uh, you can start with paper. You can start with foil, cardboard. You get to talk about do those things float? Why do they float? Why don't they float? You know, and if you can three D print, great. But man, you don't have to. You know, it's always best to start with very low cost, quick prototypes. And you can move on to better materials. If you have a pool available to you, and they don't mind this, um, build people sized boats out of cardboard. See who can get to the other side before sinking. I've heard, I don't, I've never been able to do that, but it looks awesome. And I've heard people have such fun with that. You know, when in biology, you know, if you have biology standards and you're learning about biomes, you know, kids have to represent and explain important aspects of their biome. Well, one kid liked to paint. So they brought in a little canvas and their paints and they painted their biome. A bunch of kids like to draw, so they're they're drawing uh, their biome. Now, some parts of the drawing are better. Like the one said, well, I don't draw. They have a camel. I said, I don't draw a good camel. I said, that's okay. I don't care. But that cat, those cacti are awesome. Those mountains, oh my gosh. You know, that's that's great. You know, they all had to explain what and why for the things they put in their work. Kids like to make models, the diorama kind of thing. Uh, great, fine. What do you need from me? You know, that works too. Uh, some wanted to make websites. Okay. Great opportunities for student voice and choice. You know, here are the constraints for our goal. How do you want to accomplish that? We also got to have fun with, with the cricket. Um, that I have uh, students cut a vinyl sticker out of their favorite animal from their biome. You know, they had to find an image in the proper format. They had to get it to the Cricut computer, get it into the software and adjust it, load the material on the Cricut, press go, peel, as in weed the vinyl. You know, lots of skills involved. And while they were doing all that, we talked about the animal and the habitat. We could have those conversations. They got to take the sticker home or put it on the computer or their phone, whatever. Uh, this is a poster sized piece of paper that I put up and then we were sticking up the negatives uh, so people could see uh, what we were doing. Um, and yes, some kids got decided to do Disney princesses, but that was after they had done their, their animal. The cricket wasn't in use. I said, hey, can I? Yeah, go ahead. Monsters. Who doesn't like monsters? Or mythological creatures. In biology, we have to study reproduction and genetic traits, so this is a great way for them to get into that by designing a set of parents with certain traits. you got to pick like a handful of traits that um, to deal with. Um, and then they breed them. Well, but theoretically. Uh, now the students then need to create the offspring 
to demonstrate, you know, the dominant and recessive traits. Interestingly enough, sometimes kids want there to be three parents, and then we got to figure out how that might work. And so that's, that's great. They're thinking. That's awesome. You know, here's, you know, the voice and choice. You know, they, they could draw them. They could color them. Uh, they could design them in Tinkercad. You don't have to 3D print them or if you don't have that potential, but you can if you do. Um, we could do some sewing and make plushies. You know, get some different materials. How about plushies to donate to a children's hospital or homeless shelter? That would be an interesting extension for this. You know, in a lot of science classes, we always talk about study earthquakes. Well, you know, an important aspect is how earthquakes affect buildings. So have them build some buildings and put them on a shake table and shake them and see what happens. You know, start with simple and expensive materials. Have discussions. Change the materials. See what happens now. Spaghetti works, coffee stirs, toothpicks, popsicle sticks. You know, what else would you use? How many board games already exist? How many board games about historical times or historical events? What board games could students make? The one on the left is actually student-made. You know, to explore or demonstrate their understanding of an event, a time, a place, a person. You know, design your board, design your pieces. What are the rules of play? Ask questions. Listen to conversations. You could do it all out of paper. You could throw in some cardboards, maybe some index cards. You could 3D print stuff. You could laser, you know, whatever tools and materials you have, you can do this with. You know, what topics could be turned into a board game or a computer game for that matter? Some kids can do that and it's not that hard anymore to make computer games. Simple, basic ones. You know, do you need to study the Roman times? Well, do it while building catapults. Make them little, make them big, whichever. Have lots of discussions about the rise and decline of the empire, the wars, the science and engineering of the time. What is projectile motion? What's precision? What's accuracy? You know, do you have some war to discuss other than your know, Roman times? Well, have the kids build the machines of that war and just let the discussions go. Use the materials and tools that you have. For a couple years in physics class, we did trebuchets. Um, we did them as an at-home project, and they brought them to school on one or two days, and we launched them out, out in the field. And we had some mixed results. So we had some parents, you know, involved too much um, in the building, and you know, the, the kid watched and the parent did it, which is not what we wanted. But sometimes that happens. Um, but then when we moved to doing it in class. And we just did two by fours and we did um, shorter, smaller ones. And everyone kind of had the same. And um, then every kid was, was actually doing some building then. And that was much better for that. Um, and we have the discussions while they built. That was, again, that's the important part. We didn't just want the, the product at the end. We wanted the discussions while we build. And I think that is a big reason why that project got better. is because we did it in class. Um there's a flaw of having a dozen trebuchets in your room um, because they take up a decent amount of space. You know, what do you learn from reading a book? That's always a big thing in English. What, what did we learn? Uh, there's so many things that kids could make in order to open up that conversation. So much imagery that they can utilize. A student of Kim Stanley made a lampshade with key points from the book Just Mercy. And a great, <laughs> shining the light on social injustice. I mean, just a great metaphor. It was just, uh, just awesome. Uh, candle boxes, uh, electric tea lights. Easy thing to make. Imagery can be on the side. These don't necessarily have much imagery, but you can see where instead of just designs and patterns, they could be imagery. Uh, students have to share and discuss why they chose images and what those images meant to the, meant to the story. Students can make props from a story and discuss their importance. You know, be the prop department. Having that physical artifact makes the conversations flow easier. How many ways can you think of to literally make poetry? Not just writing poems on a piece of paper and turning them in. David Thoreau has students take a walk and capture pictures of words. Then they do some cropping and arranging to make short poems. I think that's, that's an awesome 
thing to do. Really great with thinking. Okay, the poems are short, but that gets them gets them going. You know, I could then easily see students, you know, creating their own longer poems, then working with a friend um, to take a picture or themselves to actually take picture. Work with a photographer, not just do a Google search to you know find an image kind of thing, but collaborate with a photographer. Be creators, not consumers. Yes, I think all schools should have poster printers and that they're constantly used by students and you're changing out posters in the hallway um, for the students. Dan Ryder and his class reads Of Mice and Men and he wanted to get beyond you know, your basic PBL and get into more of the idea of not just projects but problems. Um, kind of, you know, what, what can we think of in more empathy, more service-oriented kind of thing. You know, so they asked the question when they were reading my you know, what do the men in this story need? And the short answer came up is, well, they needed a place to call their own that was affordable. So what became came of that was of mice and tiny houses, where students would design and build models of tiny houses based on the needs of the men with evidence from the book. They have to consider budget. They'd have to research migrant workers in the 30s, interview some current tiny house builders for construction tips. Um, and, you know, Dan talks about that he and his students feel that the skills and thinking from this will last a long time. Dan has an idea that schools can be problem-solving incubators driven by empathy. You can work with some facets of com computer science like coding and robotics uh, for different things like code blocks. The thing on the left is part of Tinkercad. It's browser based and it's a way to code designs. Um, it really thrives when you know things need repeated. You see, you just put them in repeat loops. Um, students could explore patterns or tilings. So we talk about the, the math there, but there's also the mosaics. Uh, from historic, from cultures, and from history, uh, those patterns. You know, what are what what, what were the important designs uh, from different architectures? Um, they could be uh, designing things found at a dig site for an ancient civilization, like vases or urns. Um, and then, if you could three D print them, that'd be even better. Uh, robotic kits could animate scenes from stories in pretty much any subject and you, that's a micro bit on the left and the, if you look in the middle the second picture or, or to the right of it that yellow thing is actually a motor that's going to turn something um, you can use inputs like buttons or distance sensors and motors or LEDs and sound uh, you can do it in block coding you can do it in, in uh, Python, Java but again, you're, you're coding a scene from a story. Fashion, so important to kids. We can't forget they like creating things that they wear. Um, code blocks, turtle art, turtle stitch are great ways to create items, including iron-ons for t-shirts, jewelry that can be 3D printed or laser cuttered, um, and then embroidery patterns that if you've got an embroidery, embroidery machine, What things could you discuss with gardening as the focus, whether you have an outdoor garden, a greenhouse, or an indoor garden? And I think all schools should have all three of those. Uh, you're talking about native plants. You can talk about climate and weather, food's role in a culture, farming versus industrial society, nutrition, diets around the world, spices, spice trade, uh, measurement, food deserts. Uh, what community service could you do as an offshoot? I think a lot of conversation, again, it's about the conversations you can have while you're doing, working, creating, making something. John Umekubo and his students create some awesome layered 3D designs. They've got a laser cutter and, and can work this. You don't have to have a laser cutter. Uh, just think of what kinds of 3D sceneries uh, with layers could students create in your subject area. Uh, I mean, you could see atoms in science class, right? What kind of discussion could students have while they create these? 
Can they do scenes from a book? Can they do, they do scenes from history? Washington crossing the... Uh, now I forgot the river is. Um, you know, what stories or poems could they write based off a scene that they design? You can do these on just paper, cardstock. Uh, you could use a cricket or a cameo. You know, you could you could three D print layers. I mean, whatever tools you materials you have, you utilize. You could even add some LEDs to bring in circuits. Remember, it's all about the conversations that you can have surrounding an artifact. The learning and assessment is in the conversations that you have with a student, that students have with each other. Process over product. So think of the conversations that you can have around an artifact.